Hello and welcome back to Conversations Over Coffee and welcome General Mark Hurtling. Uh, Mark Hurtling was the Commanding General of the U.S. Armed Forces in Europe and now he transitioned into healthcare as a leadership for uh, clinicians mm -hmm. and now as a part of a leading faculty for leading to engage and I think that's one of the ways our our audience knows you best. So do you mind talking about your history with Practicing Excellence, how you came into that role? Yeah, well, it, it's, it's great, Ryan, to be here with you, first of all. But secondly, you know, it's fun uh, meeting Stephen, Dr. Beeson for the first time. He was introduced to me by Dr. Mark Shapiro, who was, uh, uh, became a good friend of mine. He had asked me on his podcast a couple times. I had asked him to go with one of our physician groups to a, what we call a staff ride to the Battle of Gettysburg. So we used to take physicians, about a group of 50 doctors, nurses, administrators, uh, assign them a role as a general uh, during the Civil nice. War, yeah. and then talk about leadership under stressful situations. So Mark and I became uh, very good friends, and I guess Dr. Shapiro introduced me to Dr. Beeson, and Dr. Beeson liked some of the things I was doing and said, hey, come join us because we've got a good opportunity to make changes in healthcare. Yeah, I, Dr. Shapiro is such a big fan of our work and we love working with him yeah. so it's a great connection right there um, so back in 2015 you wrote a book about helping clinicians become leaders uh, can you talk about what you saw the reaction from that how phys physicians respond and some of the leadership as yeah, well? yeah surprisingly I'm still getting reaction from that book uh, it was a very niche book uh, geared pr primarily toward health care providers but it was truthfully a leadership book uh, it, it applied to the classes I was teaching at a large major healthcare organization and it was telling the story of what we were covering in terms of the basics of leadership. How do you lead one another? How do you lead an organization? How do you lead your boss? How do you lead up, they call it? Yeah. And uh, how do you build teams to uh, actually gain uh, goals and objectives for any kind of an organization? So what I described in the book is what we were teaching in that, in that class. To a bunch of physician nurses and administrators on how teams could come together to improve the atmosphere of healthcare. I think that's actually a great point that you bring up. It kind of just goes outside of healthcare too. It's about leadership. It's about helping people. Yeah, one of the things, if I could say this, one of the things about leadership is it's the same in any profession. It's the same in any organization. There's not a whole lot of differences other than the competencies of what you do. Uh, so you could take a leader in one organization, and as long as you trained them to be a brain surgeon or a, you know, a, a primary care physician, they could be a leader in healthcare as well. But there are certain things within the art of leadership that you really have to know to define yourself as a good leader. Definitely. Now, I think one of the coolest aspects of your career is this transition from Army to healthcare. Um, during that transition. It may have been cool to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just it's such a crazy background to have that yeah. like history to really build off of. Now, going into healthcare and being as it is, was there any like hurdles you had to go over, any obstacles in your way? Oh, or? Yeah, sure. I mean, when you transition from a family like the military is, when you've been doing it, especially like I've been doing it for 38 years, uh, there's a little bit of anxiety transitioning into the private sector. But what I found out was that the profession of medicine is a lot like the profession of soldiering. Uh, there are some, a lot of similarities. Uh, and in fact, uh, medicine and the military are the only two professions, if you look at law, the ministry, teaching, all of those are called professions. But the, the military and medicine have one thing in common in that we deal in life and death uh, in very different perspectives. So leading in those kind of professions, where you have to get things right, where you really have to have strong and effective teams uh, to, to contribute to society, it's important to understand the elements of leadership and how you apply them. You know, there's such overlap between military and medicine, right? Because there's purpose, there's driven leadership behind that. But what's lacking on the medicine side is, you know, we focus so much on the science when you get into that leadership aspect, it's almost un unexpected, yeah. right? You have physicians coming out of medical school with the science background, but they don't understand the leadership background. Yeah, that's well. exactly right. And it's one of the things I saw when I first entered the healthcare profession as an outsider, was that I had been trained through my military career that in, in our schoolhouses, in our military schoolhouses, there was always the tactics instruction or the instruction of how to use maneuver to accomplish objective 
But then there was also additional courses in how do you lead different types of organization where you put things together. What I've seen in healthcare is the focus of attention is primarily on the science of medicine. How do you fix people? How do you go inside? What's the latest research showing you in terms of the use of medicine or tools or anything like that? There's not as much emphasis on engaging with patients, leading families, leading your teammates to accomplish objectives, pairing with uh, doctors, nurses, administrators to get uh, organizational desires accomplished. So that's what I think practicing excellence brings to the table. It really, it hits that area where it complements the science of medicine with the art of leadership. We've talked about more of the uh, overarching, the umbrella terms for leadership in medicine. Now going into a more individual aspect, like you're saying with specific clinicians, um, what are some like quick advice would you give to a physician maybe who found themselves unexpectedly in a leadership role mm -hmm. And now they're trying to, you know, build those skills as they go. Yeah, well, part, part of it, what I tell the folks that listen to my classes is the, the first rule is leadership is hard. Mm -hmm. and, and you can never have a solution of X solution equals Y results because you're dealing with people. Uh, so a lot of uh, leadership lessons are gained through scar tissue, uh, making mistakes. But it's the courage to step forward to try and understand how dyads come together. People, one-on-one, -on -one, teams, one-on-10, uh, organizations, one-on-1,000. On and sometimes you don't please everybody in leadership. Uh, but a leader really has to have the courage to try and step forward and really understand the people he or she is leading and then come up with a solution to the challenges that they face. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for your time here today. Pleasure. Mark, thank you, Ryan. It's been a great time talking to yeah, you. Yeah, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. Appreciate it.